Hey everyone, Sergey here from EucraMedia.com, and in the next five videos, we're gonna talk about how to create and animate this bouncy ball entirely in After Effects. We're gonna start at the very beginning, and in the first video, in this one right here, we're gonna talk about how to create a ball. In the second one, we're gonna talk about how to create a studio type environment. In the third video, we're gonna cover the drop shadow, how to create it, how to rig it using some basic expressions. In the fourth video, we're gonna talk about the stretchy feature, again, how to rig the whole thing up using some basic expressions. And in the very last video, video number five, we're gonna talk about animation. We're gonna bring this ball to life using all the features that we have created. So without any further ado, let's dive in into the first video. Let's create a ball in After Effects. All right, so we are in After Effects, and we're gonna start fresh from the very beginning. We're gonna to go to this project panel, and we're gonna stay organized. We're gonna create some folders here. We're gonna create a basic structure to uh, stay organized because things get pretty busy quickly, and you do wanna stay organized. All right, so let's do this. We're gonna create a new folder. We're gonna call this 01 underscore comps. That's where we're going to put all of our comps in. Then we're going to create a subfolder. We're going to call this one pre-comps. That's where we're going to put all of our pre-comps. And let's create one more for assets. So let's call this one 02 underscore assets. So that's the structure that I like to keep, but you know, you can go further. You can create subfolders for like rasters, vectors, footage, and things of that nature. So let's import our first asset. We only have one for this video. So let's select this folder. That's where we want to end up. We're going to press Control I. And we're going to bring in this UM Euchre Media logo. So let's import that in. It's in there. We're good. So next, we're going to create a new composition for our ball. Now that's going to end up being a precomp. So we're going to put it into this precomps folder because it will eventually live in a main composition, which makes it a precomp. So let's select this precomps. You can either press Control N or click on this new composition icon. And here we're going to call this one ball. And then preset, you can kind of start with this HDTV 1080 2997, and then just change the width and height to 600 by 600. Okay, everything else should be the same. Now duration, I'm gonna set mine to three seconds, but you can set it to whatever you want. Then I'm gonna press okay. And now we have a new composition. We have it in here in our precomps folder. So that's where we're gonna create our ball. Let's do this. We're gonna drag this logo into this composition. And this UM logo doesn't have the circle that I normally have, but it is the same size as our composition, 600 pixels by 600 pixels, which is good. So I'm gonna check this continuously rasterize, and then I'm gonna select it, and we're going to pre-compose. So Control Shift C, and then in here, make sure the first option is checked. We're gonna call this one, well, this right here will be the graphic that will be displayed on the ball. So let's call it something like ball graphic. I'm not the best at labeling things, so I'm gonna say ball graphic. If you have a better name, go for it. So then we're gonna press okay. So now we have a pre-comp within this pre-comp. So if we wanted to change the ball graphic, we would just go into this composition. We would put either text, anything we want in this composition. Then when you go back, you would see it in here. Obviously we don't have the ball ready yet, but that's the concept. So next let's create a color because for right now we don't have any color in here, just a blank composition. So let's add some kind of color. And to do that, we're going to go to this rectangle tool, select this, go to fill, and we're going to set it to orange. This is the number I'm using, and it's going to give me this orange, but you can have your own number, your own color, whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be fine. So press OK. So now we have a fill, but we obviously don't have anything yet. So what we need to do, we need to double click, make sure nothing is selected, by the way and then double click on this rectangle tool. And when you do that, it creates a new rectangle shape, or I guess a square now. It creates a new shape layer that's the same size as your composition, which is great. Now I'm gonna select this. We're going to rename it to something like BG for background, and we're gonna drop it right underneath here like that. So, so far we have our ball graphic and then our background image. Next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna convert both of these into a sphere. And to do that, we're gonna use an effect called CC Sphere. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So, but we're gonna create another shape layer. We're gonna go over here and double click again to create another shape layer. We're gonna select this and we're gonna rename it to, let's call it Sphere. That's good. So I want for this to be an adjustment layer. So to do that, just make sure that's checked. If you don't see it, just toggle between here somewhere, you know, you'll find it eventually. So what that does, it makes this layer it converts it into an adjustment layer. And what that does essentially, whatever effect you apply to this layer will automatically apply it to everything underneath it, which is really useful. So let's do that. We're gonna select this layer. We're gonna go to effects and presets panel. And in here, we're gonna search for 
CC sphere. So this is the effect I'm going to use. Now, because I have it selected, you can just double click and it will apply it, or you can click and drag and apply it this way. Either way works. So we're going to make some adjustments in here. Right away, I can see that radius is not correct. Our composition is 600 by 600. So the radius would be half of that. So it'd be 300. Okay. Now, right away, I can, I can tell my ball right here, the ball graphic is all over the place. It's not the same. And it's like, I'm not sure exactly what it's doing, but it's distorting it. It's probably some kind of aspect ratio misunderstanding or something. I don't know, but we can fix it by selecting this and hitting S. That's one way, right? We can adjust the scale and kind of line it up, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to undo all of this. So let me show you what I, I do instead. So instead of doing that, what I like to do, I like to use a transform effect. So let's go back to effects and presets here. We're going to look for transform this effect right here. So next I'm going to apply it to our ball graphic. And what this effect does, it does the same thing, well, kind of, the same thing as what this transform properties, all of these properties, it's the same concept. We have, you know, position scale, we have all of that scale here, you know, position, you get the idea. The cool thing about this, you can make the adjustments here, you can paste it, but we're not touching these properties, it's an effect. So now we can just adjust our scale in here instead of the scale, the layer scale property. So in here, we can adjust it. Obviously, we want to adjust both width and height separately. So to do that, we're going to uncheck this uniform scale. And now we have height and width, which is great. So now we can make adjustments. But I was just thinking, like, what's causing this? And um, I started playing with just an aspect ratio, maybe like 16 by 9 or something like that. So I just typed 16 by, like, the height and the 9 for width. And it seemed to fix it. So it seemed to work exactly how it should be, which I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to leave it as that. You can label this one, maybe like scale fix. So it's kind of a, like a duct tape approach to this, but it works. Uh, so I'm going to hold on to that. So now instead of adjusting all of this stuff, I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going to go to the scale property of my layer. And now I can adjust it in here. You can see it's, it's you know, it maintains the proportional size here. So I'm going to keep it something like 350. That works well. And I can double check this. You know, I can double click here to go into this composition. Here's my logo. And if I toggle back, you can see it's almost identical minus the distortion and stuff, which is, ex you know, expected. It's living on the ball. So I'm cool with this. It's working for me. Yeah, that's a quick fix. So now we have basically the ball set up, but I'm going to change the color of this to orange. So just to stay organized, everything's nice and neat. We're going to actually adjust more properties in here. Let's go to light and we're going to adjust the direction. So obviously you can adjust the direction where the light is hitting. I'm going to tell it to hit at the top here going downwards. And then we can adjust light height, right? Do you want to hit it at the very top? Maybe somewhere in the middle. I'm going to keep it at 55. Okay. Then shading. Let's go here. And by the way, let me turn off this ball graphic right now so we can just see the, the ball by itself. And in here, let's see, what else can we adjust? Ambient, we can take it up to 55. 55 is going to be our number here. So specular, I'm going to leave diffuse where it's at. Specular, we can maybe give it a little hot spot here, but let's go to something like 30, like a subtle hot spot. Okay, and then I want it to increase. Right now it's kind of small. So roughness will give us that. If you kind of drag it all the way to the right, it goes up all the way to 0.5, which is good. So you can see before, after, that is good. Now it looks more like a ball. What else? Metal, I'm going to leave it as, as is. Reflective, let's, uh, we're going to add a reflection. And for that, we need to create a new layer. So we're going to create a new, um, let's do new reflection. I'm going to double click here. And we're going to call this one, uh, let's call it Reflection Map. That's what it's going to be. We're going to change the color of it to black. And we're going to select the rectangle tool. And we're going to draw another shape right over here. Something like that is good. We're going to change the color of this to white. Okay. So we have a white shape and a black shape. But we're going to use that as a reflection map. So I'm going to hide this right now. And we're going to go back to our sphere. And we're going to change this reflection map to reflection map. That easy. So obviously you don't see it because reflective is set to zero. But if you crank on it, you can see we, we are st starting to see our reflection, which is really neat. So maybe something subtle like 30 is good. 
subtle reflection, but I can adjust this. I can go back to this reflection map and we can double click here. We can kind of increase this a bit, scale it up. And let's see what that does. Maybe go back a little bit. So yeah, you just want to have like a nice bevel here, like a, let's see, nice curve. Yeah, that's good. We can see we have a nice curve here. It looks like a ball. Basically, it helps us to sell the whole ball idea. So I'm going to leave it as this. Now we're going to turn our graphic back on and uh, it looks like a ball to me. But one more thing I need to do actually. Right now, if I take this ball, this is essentially what this is. And if I put it into a new composition, um, the only properties that I see are the transform properties. But I want to add some other properties into it that I can edit later right? Well, let's go into this ball. Here's what we need to do. I want, I'm going to go to sphere, hit E to reveal the effect. And then we can see all the properties. I want these rotation properties, right? Up and down, side to side, and then this one. So I want all of these and also the light direction, this right here. I want that one as well. So I want those four properties to be visible in any other compositions. I want them you know, I want to quickly edit them somewhere else without going into a pre-comp and then, you know, it's a lot of work. So to do that, we're going to convert these properties into a master property. So I'm going to select all of these, three of these, and then control select that one. So we have four of them selected. I'm going to solo them by hitting S twice on my keyboard like this. And then I'm going to right click anywhere on the timeline, right click, click on open in essential graphics. And then it creates this essential graphics panel here. And this is our composition. It's set to the composition that we're currently in, which is great. So we can drag these properties in here. Now, the beautiful thing is once you do that, here's what happens. So let's go to the comp before this, right? Now, instead of just having transform properties, we also have master properties, which means that we can alter everything that we dragged in here. So we can essentially create a custom menu that we can use in any other compositions. So we can adjust up and down, side to side, you get the idea, even the light. So that's going to come in very handy for future videos. Okay, let me undo all of this. All right, that's all I wanted to hit for this. Let me kind of clean this up. I'm going to get rid of the comp we just created. That was just for, for this example. But that is it. I'm going to get rid of this as well. That's how we create a ball in After Effects. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about how to create an environment, how to bring in this ball into that environment, like a studio type environment, and how to set up a shadow. So I'll see you in the next video.